welcome back to Selena's Table and our little Aussie homestead. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I love seeing that you're enjoying the videos. I want to say thank you to those of you who have been very patient with our audio issues. I have bought a microphone now. I'm hoping this video is less troublesome in the audio department. I want to say thank you though for everyone who has hung in there, hung through our audio problem and is still here watching our videos. So today I want to show you how to make a really easy white sandwich bread. This is our go-to bread. We make this bread multiple times a week. We make it into sandwich bread loaves, we make it into bread rolls and we make it into baguettes that we then turn into garlic bread, which a few videos back, I think I did some garlic bread. I will do more in the future, but this is the bread component. This is the one recipe that removes all recipes when it comes to bread. It's easy, it's cheap. I think I worked out with our current prices using not bulk flour, just regular supermarket sized flour, the one to two kilo bags. I think I worked it out to be about a dollar fifty a loaf. So this is bakery level bread for a dollar fifty a loaf. It does take a little bit of your time, but nothing like sourdough. This is just standard white bread. Our family loves it. You can add seeds and things like that. I do also make a fruit loaf out of this same recipe. Um, but today I'm just going to show you how to make a white sandwich bread. I'm going to make it a triple batch. So I will make a loaf of bread. I will make some bread rolls for the freezer because it's school holidays. We're going to be out of the house a lot. I'm going to want some bread rolls with some nice fresh sandwiches. This bread keeps really well in the freezer too. If you freeze it the day you make it, it needs to be cold to freeze it and it needs to be frozen the day you make it. If you let it sit, for two or three days and then freeze it. It's only going to be good to use as something else like garlic bread, croutons, breadcrumbs, things like that. Frozen from the day you make it though, it's beautiful. It'll defrost perfectly well. So I've just got to fill my flour container. This is Baker's flour. And I keep our flour in a large tub. I'm just going to put this flour into here. We store our flour, all of our flours, in these large 20 kilo um, buckets. They are food grade buckets. We got them from Bunnings. You should be able to get them from any uh, local hardware or food service supplier. You do need to make sure they're food grade and that they are airtight. So that's what these are. And we buy our baker's flour in bulk. We do get it from either Costco or a wholesaler and we do pop it in the freezer for at least a week or two just to make sure if there was any weevil eggs or anything like that in it that they are dead before we go to use it and they don't hatch. Uh, yeah then we store it in these buckets and they live in our pantry. So I will make a triple recipe what I'll do is I'll actually make I will make three loaves one will be a sandwich loaf one will be bread rolls and one I will turn into like baguettes. You can also make this into hot dog rolls. And yeah, so let's get started. So each of these, each loaf of bread does use half a kilo, 500 grams of bread flour, baker's flour. So I am just going to refill my large flour container here. This one stays in the kitchen, it's not in the pantry, and it's just easier for everyday use. You can make this bread recipe using a bread machine, and you would just follow the instructions as to the order in which things are added for your bread machine. For mine, it's all the liquids followed by the flour, followed by the yeast last. And I do make this in the bread machine all the time because it just makes life really easy. Just put the ingredients in, turn it on, and you have a baked loaf of bread. My bread machine also has a dough setting and I'll often set it to a dough setting for if I'm wanting to make bread rolls. 
but today I'm going to show you how to do it using a stand mixer with a dough hook. If you don't have a bread machine and you don't have a stand mixer, you can still make this bread. It's just going to take a little bit more manual work. You'll have to stir it and you'll have to knead it for a fair bit longer than what we will using our machines. I'm using the KitchenAid today. The KitchenAid is a pretty strong motor, but I will only do one batch at a time. So I'll just do one, show you, and then I'll move on and do the others. So you'll need digital scales. The thing with bread is it's specific in the quantities of ingredients. So with digital scales, I will weigh into my KitchenAid bowl all my ingredients. It's a very simple, very easy recipe. So into our bowl, we want to weigh 300 mils of water. To that, we are going to add Ten grams of sugar. Ten grams of salt. This is sea salt. Seven grams of dried yeast. Just instant yeast. You'll need a dough hook if you're going to use a mixer. So we're just going to give that a quick mix. Now that that's mixed together, we're going to add 15 grams or 15 mils of oil. This is olive oil. and two teaspoons of bread improver. You can leave the bread improver out if you cannot get it, but what the bread improver does, it makes the bread softer and it does make it last a little bit longer in the freshness. And that's it. So we're just going to mix this for a couple of minutes. Just going to make sure all the oil and flour that's stuck on the side has been removed and is in the dough ball. At this point, it's up to you. You can keep using your mixer and let it run for five to 10 minutes. Or to save my motor, I'm going to hand knead this. And especially since I'm going to make three batches of this dough, I'm just going to let the mixer do the initial part. I'll give it a knead and then we'll rest it. So, this dough isn't perfect. You can see there is still oil lumps, but that's okay. I'm going to knead it by hand and we'll move on to making the next batch. My hands are clean. My table is clean because I just washed it. And if you need to, because it's a little sticky, just a tiny bit of flour. If 
You don't want to keep adding too much flour to this. You just want to get it into a smooth elastic ball. So I am turning it a quarter, folding it over and then pushing it down. This is kneading. This is quite different to my sourdough if you did watch the sourdough video where we just stretch it. This is more, you put some, some effort in and you'll find that it really starts to become quite soft and pliable. If you don't, now you can do this for like five to 10 minutes if you feel like it. If you don't want to, and you just want to get it to a smooth consistency, you can just let it rest for a little bit longer and it will still be a beautiful loaf of bread. So now I'm going to pop it in a clean bowl. Oh, it's stuck to me. And we will start the next batch. I'm not gonna wash this out, we're just going to keep going. I let this one knead for a little bit longer in the machine. To show you that it's more incorporated than that first one was. So this will need a little bit less time or manual work from me. That's almost the same consistency as that one already. So it's really up to you how long you want to use the machine to do the work and how much effort you want to put in yourself. If you want to put in zero effort at all and you have a mixer, you can do that too. You don't have to do any kneading. So I'll pop that one into here and do the third one. So we have the bread all sitting in here and now I'll just cover these with a wet towel. So this is a wet kitchen towel and I'm just going to place it over the top and set this aside somewhere warm. It'll take about an hour and an, or an hour and a half to double in size. While I'm waiting for my dough to rise, I've just put it over there near the stove. My oven isn't on yet. I'm not going to turn it on until I'm ready to cook so maybe 20 minutes before we're ready to cook but I'm going to get my baking pans ready I have a proper bread tin here and it has a lid that can slide on and give you a flat topped sandwich bread I prefer 
the rounded topped bread, so I'm not going to use my lid. A tip I got told by a baker friend of mine a few years ago is not to wash your bread tin. So I haven't, and it does have some fruit loaf sticky bits. But what I do like to do is use baking paper. Totally optional. You can either just heavily flour this and then put your bread in, or you can use baking paper. I'm gonna use baking paper, so I'll show you how I'm going to line my sandwich tin, a little trick. And I'm also, I also have a tray with some baking paper. This will be for the bread rolls or the baguettes, I'm not sure. And I have another one that I'm going to line with a piece of paper. That will be for the other one, the baguettes or the bread rolls. But let me show you how I line these baking tins. So a trick, instead of just pushing the paper in, someone once told me, tip it over, take your baking paper, you do need to hold it, and you just wanna find the corners, hold it still, and then you wanna fold in those outside pieces to create that. So this one facing this way. And I'm just resting my hand on top to hold it. And this, then you just mark the creases. Then you have a ready to go baking liner. I thought that was ingenious. So that just goes in my tin, ready for the bread roll, Re ready for the sandwich bread. So my dough has risen. You can see it's just sitting there. Much, much bigger. My oven is on, I've just cooked a brownie. It's over there. And so my oven is already on. I'm just gonna leave it on. So what we're going to do is now shape our dough into the different products that we're making with that today. Apologies if you can still hear my dishwasher, it is on. I'm just going to use a little bit of flour, not too much, just so that my dough doesn't stick to the bench. And I'm going to take one of these balls, or close to what would be one, because as you can see, it's just going to deflate. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to work this one into my sandwich bread. So I'm just going to stretch it out and then roll it up like that. Then I'm going to tuck in the ends and just gently roll it back and forth. I want it to be nice and smooth and even like that and then straight into our sandwich pan. Like that. Now, that can be all. You can just let that rest now. I want to put sesame seeds on mine, on all of these products today. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to wet my hand with water and just rub my hand gently over the bread and then get my seeds. These are just white sesame seeds and give it a sprinkle and then press, just gently press some of the seed into that wet dough 
Don't soak your dough, you just want your hand wet to do it. And now that is ready to set aside and rise again. I'm going to put this on my stove over there. The stove's not on, but the oven's on, so it's the warmest spot in the kitchen at the moment, and I'd like to get this risen. So we're gonna put it back over there, and I'll pop that wet towel over the top of it. And now we'll move on to the next one. So we're just going to split this in half. I'm going to use a little bit more flour. It's a little sticky as you can see. It's okay, it still makes a beautiful bread. Okay. This one I'm going to make into three baguettes and they're shaped very similar just they're just longer and skinnier very similar to the sandwich bread we're just going to roll it up tightly tuck in the little end and then pop that on our baking sheet. This one's a bit too skinny. There we go. And the same with the sandwich bread. I'm just going to wet my hand and just rub with a wet hand just the tops just so that they will adhere to my sesame seeds. You don't have to do this bit if, this step if you are not wanting seeds. And just a gentle sprinkle on top. If you wanted to make hot dog buns, it's the same as this, but you just make them shorter. Now I'll pop these over with my sandwich bread on the stove, cover it, and let it rise. Okay, now we'll make the bread rolls. Now when I make giant burger buns, I'll make six bread rolls out of one batch of this bread dough. If I want dinner rolls, I'll make 16, 12 to 16. Today I'm going to make eight because these will mostly be used for like salad sandwiches, ham and salad rolls sort of thing. So eight, we're gonna cut it in half. And then with each half, we will cut into four. You can be more specific if you want and weigh each of your rolls. I'm not too worried. They're not all even. Now to make a ball, I'm going to just pinch over the edges like this. Okay, 
turn it over, get these out of the way, and then with the seam on the bottom, you just want to make your hand into a C shape, cup it, and just roll it on your bench to give a nice smooth Yeah, it's got a nice smooth finish and then we'll pop that on our tray. A little bit of flour, not too much. Again, just pulling over into a centre like that. And then C, seam side down, give it a roll. And there we have all eight. So you can let them rise like this, or what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to wet my hand and then pat each one down so that they're a, they're a flatter bun. And again, I want sesame seeds on these. It is now wet. And I'm just going to press down like this, flatten them out. They will still be quite round but I like to flatten them a little bit. And then a sprinkle of sesame seeds. <coughs> and another pat down just to push those seeds in, because when it rises, we want the seeds to stay on it, at least most of them. And I'll set these with the others and let them rise. It's been 20 minutes since I have set my bread aside to rise. If you were in a rush, you could cook them now. I'll show you how much they have actually risen. You will, you should be able to notice a little difference. Obviously less so with the bread rolls because they were last. And they will continue to rise while cooking. You can see those ones have definitely risen. And the sandwich bread is filling up the tin nicely. I will, I'll give it another 20 minutes and then I'll pop them in the oven. So these are still hot. So I just want to show you what they should look and sound like so that you know they're ready. So they should have a little bit of colour at least. OK, 
Can you hear that hollowish sound? They need to have that, that slightly hollow sound. That's how you know that they're ready and they won't be doughy in the middle. These have turned out to be a really great size. I'm happy with that. And we have our sandwich bread is not quite finished. So we'll just wait till that's finished and I'll show you all of our bread products. All of these bread products have taken about 20 to 25 minutes each to cook in the oven. My oven is set to 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video, but that's what it is set at. There's a fly. Uh, yeah, so the buns, the garlic breads, and the dinner roll, well, the hamburger buns, they have both taken 20 minutes. The sandwich bread will take between 20 and 30, depending on how dark I want it and the sort of crust I'd like. So I'm thinking 25 today, but I'll have a check and I'll let you see. The sandwich bread is ready. It's very hot. I'm going to get it out of the tin right away. Lovely and hollow. Thank you so much for spending time with me in the kitchen today as we made a really simple sandwich bread recipe and we turned it into some garlic bread sticks well to be garlic bread sticks some baguettes and we made some burger buns and we've got a loaf of sandwich bread all of our bread products are out of the oven and now cooling and i will wait till they are actually cold before i freeze my baguettes and my burger buns the sandwich bread, that will be stored in a cloth bag like this. This was a tea towel that I sewed into a drawstring bag and I keep my bread in those. So that will, the sandwich bread will just stay in one of those in the pantry and we will enjoy these bread products. So thank you for spending time with me and I hope you enjoyed our video.